Hey guys, Zach King here with a Soundtrack Pro tutorial. The first one I've actually done for Final Cut King and I'm gonna just give you a quick overview really fast for those of you who are jumping in here and have never really looked at this interface. So put on your seatbelt and let's get going. Up here in the right hand corner we have what I call the pain mix where you have different pains you can select for a different area you wanna focus on. So if I wanna focus on here just in the timeline, I can select all these buttons or if I want to put them back, just select the panes that you want there. If you want to mix her up, and basically, if you hit this Layouts tab, you can revert it back to a standard layout or a pre-made layout that you want to make. I'm going to revert this back to standard, which is how it is right now. And you're also going to see if I move these grabbers on the side, I can open up this video. I can also pop out these tabs, and so they can free float in space. If I want my video positioned somewhere else, or I can add the tabs to another location. Again, I'm going to go to the Layouts tab and change that back to Standard. One of the tabs you're going to be working in a lot is the Video tab, and I want you to get familiar with all these tabs here, every single tab you're going to be working in, but especially the Video tab you're going to see here, this plays your video like in Final Cut Pro and corresponds to the areas I'm marking with my playhead in the timeline. The next tab over is the project tab. This is going to have all the information you need about your project, what's going on in here, frame rates, time code, everything you need to know is going to be in here and you're going to be working in this tab a lot so get to know what's in here. Next over we have our project tab and this is related with information that's here in this tab and this is called entitled right now because I haven't titled it anything, I haven't saved it and it's basically got my video and all my sound effect layers. Now the tools up here that you're going to be using the most is your selection tool, the arrow. You're going to be using your time slice tool to select different layers in your audio and video tracks. And then you're going to be working with your blade tool like in Final Cut. And it's the same key command luckily. And then the scrub tool, which you're going to be using to pinpoint exact locations in your timeline. For a quick selection of these tools while you're working, hit the tilde key, which is right above your tab, and it's going to have all the same tools right at your mouse's fingertips. Your mouse's fingertips? Whatever. That's the tilde key right above the tab. Let's go to the global navigation, and that's up here. This wide view of your project that shows the entire span of what's going on. You can grab this, and it's really nice because you can pinpoint areas without having to roll over all the way and then go down and find that one effect that's over here. But what you can do is just select it, it'll put your playhead there, and move this up or down and pinpoint that exact effect that you're looking for. So there's a quick navigation tool that's really useful for larger projects. The next thing I want to show you is up here in your ruler. This is your timeline ruler. And basically you've got a selection area and you can do that by hitting the upper top where you see these tiny ticks. That's how you make a selection. And to get rid of your selection, just tap it with another click and it goes away. The area below that is where you're going to mark your in and out points for looping. And what you can do is just do the same thing. Select that area there and make your looping selection. And when you're playing, it'll just keep going back to the beginning here when it hits this end. To get rid of this area, just hit Option X. And if you want to just scrub through, make sure you grab the triangle tip on the playhead. Now to add a track here, what you can just do is go to multi-track, add track, or hit command T, and the track will appear at the bottom of the list, track 9. To rename it, click, and the new name appears. To change the logo, double click, and you're going to see I can change it to an icon of my choice. Now in this track we have a standard record, mute, and solo, and right here we have a bypass which if you hit this, it'll bypass any effects that's being sent to your track. Also, you have a levels and a left and right pan. If you want to work in surround sound, right click this and hit use surround panner. Now you're going to see a surround sound editing bar appears. To revert this back, right click use stereo panner. Let's go back up to the top layer and look at something different here. Uh, hit this down arrow button and you're going to see it shows the envelopes here. Now if you want to select these envelopes, what you can do is grab them one by one 
or select them in a group like I just did and move them around. To add them, what you do is just double click, double click, and you can change them according to whatever you want. You're going to see that your panner also over here is changing while I move that, so you can see how much it's affecting. Okay, let me close this up now. To make a simple trim, what you're going to do is get your arrow close to the edge of these effects here and just make the trim. You'll see your arrow turns into a, a trim tool and just pull back. To do a fade in and fade out, what we're going to do is put your, your arrow to the upper, the top half of the clip and you're going to see as you drag it creates a crossfade in and a crossfade out. You can do this with any audio in the project. So there's a quick overview. I'm going to be doing probably a couple more parts of this because we have a lot more to cover. The bottom half, we haven't even covered anything about sound effects or favorites or recording or whatever. So this is just your very first part. Stay tuned. FinalCutKing.com. I'll see you guys later.